Pokemon's battle system. At the fundamentals, it's easy enough to understand. Not rock, paper, scissors easy, but easy enough to where six-year-old me could mash A through most of the game. For the second generation of games, however, a new layer of complexity is added. The introduction of held items into the mix. What are you kids doing? What knife? What do you mean, what knife? Why are you holding a knife? Why am I She's turning knife? me into a real artist. For this video, I, Substitute, will focus on items that alter traits when held during a fight. We'll go through some that will activate when the holders hit, negate status effects, and generally, give passive boosts. These ideas and more will be free to use for your Pokemon related projects. Let us break out our dowsing machines and look for those so-called items. The first set focuses on enhancing battle effectiveness, boosting stats when hit by your opponent. For example, Number 1. Oil. Oil boosts speed if hit by a fire type move, in the same vein as the cell battery or the snowball. Think of it as igniting fuel in an engine to make it go vroom vroom. The item itself is consumed after activation, just like Number 2. The ESP Share. Inspired slightly by the tinfoil hats, the ESP Share raises a special attack if hit by a psychic move. There are many more iterations that can be made from each of the remaining types, but I'll leave that up to you in the comments. On to the next, which is... Number 3. The Beam Mirror. The Beam Mirror sends beam attacks back to their originator. The user will take a quarter of the beam's damage, use up its mirror, and send back a quarter damage to the opponent if applicable. All beam and beam-like moves will be affected. If beam attacks aren't a worry, Perhaps you're prepared for something closer in range. Much like... Number 4. Glue Trap. If an attacker makes physical contact with the holder of Glue Trap, both are locked in, prevented from switching. Use this as a free mean look or a poor man's arena trap ability. On the topic of abilities, we also have... Number 5. The Reset Button. Hitting a Pokemon with this item will reactivate an ability, if applicable. Abilities qualify if they activate on send out, such as Intimidate, Weather Setting, Trace, and Download. Activate when hit like Gooey or Rough Skin, or activate at the end of each turn like Moody and Speed Boost. Ones that are always passively on are unaffected. We can always play around with abilities more, but I plan on saving that for another video. For the next few, how about changing types instead? These items in particular change the holder's type when struck. Number 6. The Magic Bone. Combining the air balloon with magic powder's effects, the magic balloon gives the user a psychic type, at least until the balloon is popped. Fairy type would work even better, which adds immunity to dragon, just as the air balloon does to ground. Number 7. The water balloon. The water balloon adds soaks effects onto the holder of the burst, turning them into water type. Similarly, the dirty balloon changes the holder to poison type when popped. Fertilizer into grass type, sandbag into ground type, which would be excellent for anything weak to electricity. You can honestly do this for every type. I'll cut us off here for now, so you can try it out on your own. Stat boosts don't always have to rely on taking damage, which we've covered extensively. They can also be prompted by non-damaging status moves. Number 11, the party hat. Happy birthday, Pikachu. Any mental or covered status effects, like attract, taunt, or torment, gets turned into a morale boost instead on the wearer. Likewise, number 12, the dunce cap. The dunce cap converts any status ailments into confusion for the wearer. This is something I feel Imakuni would use. Pair that with own tempo for best results. Status ailments play a huge part in how the previous two entries operate, but these are more just for fun. We'll look into more status related items in finer detail. Originating from unused Gen 2 item effects, these next ideas would in theory prevent secondary conditions of the opponent's moves from affecting the holder. Pure status inflicting moves like Will-O-Wisp and Toxic still work as anticipated, while secondary moves like Fire and Poison Fangs will lose their side effects. For instance, Number 13, The Rebreather. The Rebreather prevents secondary poison, while Toxic, Poison Powder, and Poison Gas still apply. The Rubber Patch, on the other hand, prevents secondary paralysis. The Chill Patch prevents secondary burns. The Thaw Patch prevents secondary freezing. There's no free status move to worry about. Yet. Number 17, the Buzz Band. Finally, the Buzz Band prevents secondary sleep. Wow, there are actually a lot of sleep-inducing moves. No secondary sleep effects I can think of, besides Yawn, maybe. I know. We could just make it block the condition altogether. 
In fact, let's try that out for the next few. Number 18, the Starry Band. The Starry Band prevents confusion, while the chest knot prevents attraction. The hall pass prevents the holder from being pursued or trapped. Meanwhile, harness wearers can't be phased, chainmail wearers can't be crit, and Pokemon protected by the talisman cannot be harmed by ghostly ailments. Destiny Bond, Pear's Song, and Curses are nothing to fear. I think we're good on status effects for the time being. Let's return to the basics and look at other items with other benefits. The effects of this final set apply simply when held, giving buffs to the base stats, moves, types, and even abilities. Check it out. Number 24, the Siege Vest. The Siege Vest is a companion to the Assault Vest. It has weaknesses in the absence of solid rock and filter. As a trade-off, however, the wearer's health cannot go up, not by potions, wish, self-recover moves, whatever, and or cannot be switched, whichever makes more sense to you. Another vest is... Number 25, the Tactical Vest. A more offense-oriented vest. Moves have variation in how much damage is actually applied. For the Tactical Vest, min-max damage is always maxed. Number 26, the Ammo Belt. Multi-hit moves hit 2 to 5 times normally. With the Ammo Belt, that range is increased to 3 to 6. A Skill Link Mon will now always hit 6 times instead of 5. To round off the militaristic set we have... Number 27, Blast Powder. Blast Powder. Boosts self-destruct and explosion damage. Rather than fiddling around with base power, we can simply use the Gen 1 calculation, which halves the target's defenses before applying explosive damage, both against the opponent and oneself. To avoid self-damage... Number 28, the Padded Helmet. The Padded Helm prevents self-damage from recoil moves. Users of Head Smash and Flare Blitz can rest a little easier with this overhead, best paired with the Reckless ability. Now, best paired with Strong Jaw, can you guess what item is next? Number 29, a metal grin. It strengthens biting moves for those who like to crunch. Inspired by the Japanese Hanya masks, this would be a great addition for our physical attackers who rely on crunch and elemental fang moves for coverage. For special attackers, we have... Number 30, the Hidden Cliff. Boosts Hidden Power's base power. While it's rather sad to see Hidden Power go the way of the Dodo, there are still mons left that can use it, unknown specifically. Hacks and fan games can still take advantage of the Hidden Glyph and Hidden Power combo, if only to benefit special attackers who formerly relied on it for coverage. With similar move-altering properties, we have... Number 31, the Burden Glyph. The Burden Glyph boosts legacy HM moves. This is meant more for former HM ones that aren't Surf and Waterfall. These two are already good on their own, so consider their exclusion. The rest are fair game. Ones that don't do damage like Defog and Flash will double down on their effects instead. Flash will lower accuracy by two stages, while Defog does the same, but with evasion. Burden Glyph for your HM Slave. Beasts of Burden, traversing through means like flying. Transition onto the next entry. Number 32, Jingle Bells. Made just for deer Pokemon, you know. You know Sos, but Thurigen, Deerling, and Stampler. Sirius, Word Deer, Gobolin, others. Huh, I guess that's it. The source is of course Santa's reindeer. This isn't really a serious idea, but if it were to work, the wearers of Jingle Bells shall levitate and hail, without taking damage from it. Merry February to all, and to all a good night. Number 33, the Neverstone. Never say never, the holders of Neverstone have their abilities nullified. It can be tricked onto an enemy, or held in the case of Truant Slacking and Slow Start Regigigas to offset their massive nerfs. Is it OP? Absolutely. Is it fun? Indeed it is, if you're not the victim. On the non-OP side of things... Number 34, the Handicap. We have the Handicap, which makes the holder more vulnerable to crits. Think fighting games or golf. Primarily, this should be held by an enemy tutorial mod, without new players actively noticing, of course. Save it for the first in-game battle, where the rival picks a starter advantageous to yours. Number 35, Single Light. To end the list, we have Single Light, an offshoot of Eviolite. Singlight evenly raises the non-health base stats of a qualified Pokemon until their total reaches 530, just like the starters. To qualify, the Mon must have no evolutionary relatives and must have a base stat total below 500 in the first place. This is to exclude inherently strong Mons like Mythicals, Legendaries, and Paradoxes. 
which have enough stats as is. I see it as a consolation prize for the loners who've lost their megas. Take poor Mawal here, which happens to be one of my favorite Gen 3 mods. From NU to PU to Holy Cannoli Ubers. Knock back down to no longer available in the game. Singleite. Or, you know, retain megas for a few mods in the future. Did you come up with held items of your own? Comment down below. Next time, we'll be covering herbs and berries concurrently, followed by charms. Even if you don't end up using these ideas, feel free to send it to a person who would. Check out my channel for more idea lists and tutorials. And if you haven't already, become a substitute subscriber. Until we meet again.